There's a new Miracle Health product you can buy right now, today. You don't need a prescription, permission, you don't need a photo ID. It's sold openly on the shelves of supermarkets and convenience stores from coast to coast. I think you're going to love this stuff. It's called plant-based peanut butter. That's right, peanut butter made from peanuts. Uh, hey, everybody, I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle and Scott Ott. This is Right Angle, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Gentlemen, I read a uh, fascinating and very revealing article in The Atlantic this morning by a uh, Yasmin Tag, and I, I hope I'm pronouncing her, her last name correctly. She's one of these young people, I assume, uh, based on her writing, who's probably been told all of her life that uh, meat is bad for you and it's and it's even worse for the planet. So she, she was... Yeah, she was trying all the, the plant-based alternatives. It's God murder. bless her. Meat is she murder. couldn't give up her burgers. And and here's here's what she wrote in uh, in this piece in the Atlantic. She said, "Meat alternatives I found cost more than their conventional counterparts and are made with complicated ingredients that raise doubts about their healthiness and even then taste just okay." Uh, other people have had similar concerns. Part of the reason the popularity of these products has declined in recent years to such a degree that Beyond Meat is reportedly now in survival mode. But beyond the meat aisle, the plant-based label lives on in virtually every food product imaginable. Instant ramen, boxed mac and cheese, Kraft singles, Kit Kat bars, even queso. You can now buy plant-based peanut butter. If peanut butter is vegan to begin with, then what is the point of the label? And who asked for plant-based liquor? Well, I, I, I did. You, you can't make rye without rye. <laughs> I um, <have> to... <laughs> Bill, I submit to you that the reason we have plant-based peanut butter, well, marketed that way is because there is a market for it that so many of our grocery shoppers these last generation last couple of generations are so either uneducated or attuned to virtue signaling that they see plant-based peanut butter and that's got to be worth a couple bucks more more than the regular jar of peanut butter (laughs) well you're talking about the market size i think the market for plant-based foods has got to be somewhere around 8.8 8.8 billion right i mean i'm not i'm not aware that i've ever eaten a mineral based food or 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 um or or anything like that i mean pretty sure everything i've eaten is plant based food even the animals i've eaten are animals that ate plants so saying we have this plant based food for food is very 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 strange you know, organic molecules are interesting. The reason you get energy from eating food is because organic molecules are very complex, and when they break down, they release energy. And um, and so, yeah, everything I've ever eaten is plant-based. I must say, however, um, that since the subject oh, of peanut, peanut butter, butter came so up, good. which is my favorite thing in the mm. world, but my, my all-time favorite thing in the world, it's just my favorite thing ever. Skippy Super Chunk is it's just that that's that i just love it hey, d- i love don't it don't start a flame war <sighs> oh, in the comments by mentioning chunky peanut chunk. butter and strawberry preserves on thick okay. slice wonder <laughs> well, bread and it's got to be the thick slice wonder bread <laughs> <sighs> very oh, good goodness, man you're a good goes. man you obviously know what you're talking Comment about you're a connoisseur <laughs> um so um but uh i went i used to live across the street from a whole foods I didn't do it on purpose i just did and and I, I needed some peanut butter, so I'll just go across the street to the Whole Foods. And so I had some actual, genuine, real peanut butter where they just took peanuts and ground it up and, and put it in a jar. And I don't know what that stuff was, but it wasn't peanut butter. Um, I, so I don't know what they add to the peanut butter besides the peanuts, but I've had peanut butter that was just it's peanut butter. It's vegetable oil that they add to make peanut the good butter. stuff creamy. It's not even close the, to peanut the butter. Whatever so, organic, vegan, no vegetable oil stuff it's inedible whatever comes out of that nozzle at the gif plant or or or, you know or skippy plant because that's what happens right (laughs) whatever it is that's coming out of that nozzle is delicious and i'll bet you that formula is as closely guarded as the formula for oh and the first knife swipe which is also plant-based on my the first knife swipe across the surface of that jar of peanut butter is like it's like going into virgin snow on a it's like the first man on the moon it's like the the first steps on the moon you know know that little knob on the 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 back of the take a picture the best most flavorous piece of the, the, the the whole chicken the whole bird the the first part of the peanut butter that leftover part from the nozzle extrusion that that sticks up from the flat surface that 
<laughs> That's the best bite of yes. peanut butter in the whole damn jar. <laughs> I wonder if there's a scientific term for that I'm going to have to hit Google thing. now. I'm sure there is, yes. And I think we, I think you could open a restaurant just called Extruded Food that could be very <laughs> successful. So it, just to answer your question, Steve, I'm, I'm, I'm well, generally in favor it, of plant-based food. And it's those kinds all I've ever eaten of just and all I ever will eat. far-right radical opinions that keep people tuned into this show since 2009. Uh, mm, uh, Scott, right. our, our young writer at The Atlantic, went on to say yeah, that yeah, we may yeah. have already hit peak plant-based. According to a recent survey from the Food Industry Association, there is a, there is substantial confusion about what the label means, and that could be discouraging people from buying plant-based products. Some are now outright skeptical of the label. And this is where I just had to marvel at Yasmin. I was I was with her the whole time as I'm I'm reading her process and and now she's saying that maybe not all foods are plant based and don't deserve the label. <laughs> well, is, I mean yes. I, I like Bill, I think all foods are plant based and um I pref I prefer um, sending my plants to the factory that chews them up and then digests them and then turns into meat. And then, uh, and then I eat that. So that's my favorite way to eat uh, plants is uh, in meat. Um, but, you know, it's interesting because over the years, I've noticed that there's this trend that probably started in the 70s where they started slapping labels on things uh, describing what they don't have um, be that they've never had or describing what they have uh, that they've always had. And um, <laughs> so gluten-free scotch. Yeah. So everything is like, you know, it's it's caffeine free, seven up or gluten free or vegan or, you know, Queen's Night at the Opera had no synthesizers. I mean, we, we have to say <laughs> We have to tell people these things. And this actually started off, uh, Claude C. Hopkins, who wrote Scientific Advertising in about 1923, talked about this phenomenon where if you advertise something, uh, even if it's a relatively common product or a product made through a common process, but you're the first one to claim that process, then oh. you get a market advantage. So at one point, there was a beer company that was advertising that um, that it was made from uh, water that was drawn from deep in the bowels of the earth and that was always 52 degrees and <laughs> all this kind of stuff. Well, did they were just pumping water out of the ground like everybody else did, but they were making it sound like it was some proprietary process. There was a cereal that was like a puffed cereal, and um, the headline in the ad <laughs> said, cereal shot from guns. And it, all it was... <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. All it was was the manufacturing process for a puffed wheat or puffed corn cereal. <laughs> So, I mean, it's just, it's the genius of advertising. Um, and But I think part of, you know, I'm not sure whether your young uh, author here is it, that the woman you were reading um, was being sarcastic or trying to be funny or just writing from a genuine heart of uh, that, that's uh, pure as a, a bowl of fresh peanut butter. But um, I think the challenge we face is nobody born today has to know where food comes from. They, they don't have to know anything right. about where food comes from. Food comes from That's the right. store, you know, and it used to be, you know, in when I was a kid, we had to go hunting at the grocery store for our own food. But now it just shows up at your door. You don't even have to hunt. So it's getting even easier and easier. And then and now they're making these kits where you can have this like gourmet dinner that all the ingredients are actually already chopped for you and and weighed and measured and all that kind of stuff and then and then pretty soon it's just going to show up at your doorstep completely ready to eat as it as actually many people do order stuff from restaurants now but you know I'm I'm kind of pining for the more Ted Nugent like days of uh, of kill it and grill it where we had an idea where our food came from when I was a kid we had this this little garden out back, but we never called it a garden. Pop called it a truck patch. And so we always called it a truck patch. I'm not sure why it was called that. I think I'm sure some gardening expert will be able to share that with me. But we would plant uh, tomatoes and potatoes and corn and beans of various kinds, string beans and peas and stuff like that. But one year, 
Pop got the idea that we would plant peanuts. And we were all fascinated by this because frankly, the coolest thing that we had in our garden was potatoes. And the reason why potatoes are cool is because you don't know what they look like until you dig them up. Like every other thing that we grew, you could see it growing on the vine or on the you know plant, but the potatoes were under the ground and it was like a treasure hunt when you dug them up because you're like, oh, look at this. I got a big one. Anyway, so he planted this row of peanuts and the day before he planned to dig them up uh, and harvest these peanuts, Apparently, a mole went right down the row, or multiple moles <laughs> went right down the row and just cleaned out the crop, <laughs> like ate all the peanuts. <laughs> so we never really got to see what a crop of peanuts would look like. We pulled it up, and it was just a tangled mess with nothing on it. But, but when I was a kid, I got to see how that happened, and kids don't see that now. Uh, I worked on a hog farm. And, and we had cows and, and hogs and chickens. I killed chickens so that we could, you know, so they could be prepared to eat. Um, when you see how it's done, you have a different kind of perspective on food than when you just see a label that has to inform you that peanut butter is plant-based. Just real quick, Steve, when Scott was talking about these uh, gourmet packages, you know, where, where you're going to make this gourmet meal and everything's absolutely measured and cut and, you know, and, and for some reason that thing always bothered me. It just bothered me. And, and while Scott was talking, I realized I realized why it bothered me. It's like, yeah. it's like paint by numbers yes. for food. Yeah, my wife actually, you know? she signed it's, us up for, for yeah. one of these things. She got like a two or three dinner starter kit, just mostly because she was, she was curious and, and both of us love to cook. And she was so flipping bored. There was nothing to do. She was, again, she didn't feel like yeah. she was cooking. She felt like she was painting by numbers. It was just, there was, there was, there was no, the food is love. There's love in the preparation. There's love mm -hmm. in the eating. And if you're not doing that, you're not getting that into story. Uh, Bill and Scott both uh, talked about this, but I want to show you some, some photographic evidence of what we're, what they were talking about here. So if you can just pop that, that photo that I've uploaded onto the screen here. There is a uh, an ancient and artisanal process known as mm -hmm. metabolization. And through this process, an ordinary cow is able to transmute ordinary grass into a succulent steak so realistic that even experts have mistaken it for real. And and you can do this yourself, just, just like this photo that I've uploaded with a hard <laughs> char on the outside, rare to medium, rare in the middle, and, and nobody nobody will know mm. that that stuff used to be grass. No lab required. All right, there's your right angle on that, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com who are responsible for this content, and I'm totally blameless. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah.